Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for the week of October 14th through October 19th. 18th, 2024. So from Monday to Friday, I felt no need to do two. <laughs> I was telling you how, what I felt about the week. Okay. <sighs> Billy and Sally run into each other at the park. They run into each other all the time. I'm surprised they haven't run into each other in the bed yet, but that's coming. Um, And as they're talking, Adam and Chelsea happily they're going back and forth with each other walking through the park they had a very positive uh session with connor you know good report they're happy but they see sally and billy so now happiness turns into awkwardness and you know that little inter interchange went and left and whatever because no matter what chelsea says her comfort level embody actions and framework it is leaning back to adam it really is um so that will be a family again for a hot minute because they absolutely never stay together um billy also gets a phone call from jill and jill i'm, I'm just going like progressing throughout the week probably with each character that i choose to talk about um because Lily, you know, she snitched on him. She dimed to jail, which she should have done in the first place before he even fired her. Or the minute he fired her, she should have called Jill, right? So um, Billy says, she didn't tell you she tried to sabotage me. And Jill's like, look, Lily has been the backbone of keeping this company afloat. And then he goes, and she says, and you hired Phyllis? And he goes, yes, Phyllis has been an asset. Phyllis, you know, she she's a professional. And she goes, let me tell you something. And Phyllis started to walk in, but she could hear Jill. She goes, no, Phyllis is definitely not an asset here. And he goes, mom, Phyllis just walked in the door. And Jill says, well, you know what, Phyllis? I'm having a conversation, a private conversation with my son. So you're going to need to leave. And Phyllis was like, oh, say no more. So she backs out, closes the door. And Jill pretty much lets him know that I'm coming to Abby and Devon's wedding. By then, you better have fired Phyllis. And he goes, mom, I don't want to fight. I don't care what you want. You better have fired Phyllis and you better have uh, gotten Lily back at the company. And he goes, Lily and I can't work together. He goes, no, 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 Billy. I'm sorry. Did you think that was a request? You're going to do whatever you have to do to get Lily back at the company. Because see, here's the thing. If you don't do what I've told you to do. By the time I come to town, I'm going to take the company back and I'm going to run it myself. And Billy is just looking. Oh, oh no. See, he's big man on campus making all these decisions. Big man. As soon as he gets the smack down from mommy. Oh, no. So he tells Phyllis he has to fire her. And oh, she just, you know, Phyllis, she didn't take that lying down. She ended up telling him, you know what? I'm going to talk to Jill myself. And Billy says, it's not going to work, Phyllis, at all. She says, you know, Billy, you underestimate me. By the time I finish talking to Jill, she's going to know that I'm an asset here. Okay. So. I'm going to say my own job. Well, that's great for Phyllis to think she's going to do that. But some other stuff has come up with Daniel, and I'm going to get into that. Um, we have Lily complaining to Devon, but now I got this. I'm not done fighting because Devon is like, you're not going to beat Victor. She goes, oh, or and Billy, you trying to fight both of them? She goes, they both 
underestimate me. Okay, Lily, but she does concede to Devon that he was right, right? So Devon's mad because she goes, I hope this doesn't, you know, interfere with your family. And he goes, well, this does... No, no, no. He was talking to Nate. I think it was Nate. Because Nate says, ooh, with what Victor did to Lily, how's this going to affect your relationship with Victor? And Devon says, oh, it's it's going to affect it. And then Nate's like, and how's this going to work for Abby? He says, well, you know what? I, I don't know, but if Victor, his actions definitely affect our relationship. So we're going to see that strain happening there. Um, Nikki tells Victor that she told Claire, I mean, I'm not, not Claire, told the truth to Lily. And Victor's like, oh, I knew you would. <laughs> and she's like, what? He goes, Nikki, I knew you weren't going to, con to continue to lie and deceive Lily. That's not who you are. She says, well, if you knew that, why did you have us go through this pretense in the first place? He says, ah, because I needed to get some things into place. But ultimately, I knew that you would come, come clean because that's who you are, right? So she, she goes, but Lily, it doesn't look like she's going to work for me. He goes, ah, you know what? Whatever, Lily ain't vital. He, he, that's how he felt about her to begin with. She's not a Newman. She ain't vital. But she did say she had a great meeting with uh, um, uh, Claire. And, you know, Claire is interested in working with her. Watch, Nikki's going to replace uh, Lily with Claire. No comparison in, in experience, but, you know. So, but we'll see because Jill's not going to give up without a fight. Jill's not going to let Victor just come in and take her company. But the thing is, every time Jill's company has come under attack, she's had to go to Victor to help her. Now, one thing the soap always, always has us not even think about or consider. Devon Winters is a billionaire, right? There is no reason Victor is the only one people go to. Jill can go right back to Devon because who gave Jill the money to buy Chancellor from Victor in the first place? It was Devon. It was Devon. So I do believe, especially now that Devon, Victor's on the outs with him, Devon is going to be the one to, look, he could be a pivotal player into snatching up Chancellor right out from under Victor and putting his sister in charge. See, why would Lily not go to her brother? Her brother's not as rich as Victor, but her brother has a uh, chance ain't worth a billion dollars. And Devon has billions, right? So that's really stupid. But they want us to forget that. They do. They they want us not to, to remember Devon's financial status. Uh, next thing we have, we have, um, you know, Audra still vowing to, uh, get Glissot back. And we have now Diane, Diane and Jack are arguing in public every single place they go, which is something they've never done. Now, instead of showing them working at Jabo, where they work. They both got laptops in public places working instead of working at home. They can work at home. 
And then they're arguing in public places, loud, ridiculous. So, you know, Kyle is kind of gloating at the chaos he's caused, but, you know. And then Diane ended up, uh, because they know he stole it. They just haven't been able to prove it. My whole thing is uh, the Benedict Arnold lives in the same house where you left the laptop that's obviously not password protected, Diane, because that's how Kyle stole it from Diane's laptop. So anyway, Jack is just torn because he doesn't want to cut his son out. And Diane is like, we need to do what we need to do. We need to uh, have it investigated. Our son investigated and charges pressed against him if necessary. And Jack is like, and you would do that. You would do that. She goes, Jack, it needs to be done. Now, mind you, Jack threatened the same thing to Kyle, but Kyle knew those were idle threats, right? You ain't going to do that, Dad. So needless to say, they're boring. And Victor is just chuckling at his handiwork. Oh, he's happy to see them fighting and arguing. And uh, I don't even want to. Mm, I'm done with that. So we have Sharon. She is now fantasized about Nick. She made this romantic picnic for her and Nick. And, oh, Nick plays right along with everything, right? And poor Lucy. And the, the verdict isn't out to me on Lucy yet. Lucy's at the coffee house and Faith comes in. And Faith sees her and she goes over to her and she hugs her, right? And, oh, Lucy just breaks down. And, oh, oh, oh. But, you know, Faith is there just comforting her, comforting her, being a, a, a the nice person Faith is. Well, Sharon and Nick, the picnic's over. They come in and Sharon sees Faith comforting Lucy and the look on her face. Right. So they go over to her and she's not she's trying to still mask it. What's going on? And she goes, Lucy was here, you know, and, and just comforting her. And, and Nick is like, you you know, how are you doing, Lucy? And so she's crying, answering his question. And Sharon is like, where's your father? Right. And she goes, he's at home. Um, the police are searching our apartment or whatever she says. She goes, because for some strange reason, the police is looking like they're questioning my father. Like they're thinking he's involved or, you know, and Sharon, oh, her demeanor changes a bit then. Oh, well, it'll be okay. Right. So at some point, they well, Nick and Sharon sit down, and Sharon's telling her some stupid words of wisdom, right? And, but still not overly sincere, but you know, just and I'm thinking, woman, you killed her mother, and you I don't see how they're gonna redeem Sharon. I just don't see it. I don't see a redemption. I don't care if somebody snuck in and killed Heather placed Sharon on the couch. Cause remember Sharon woke up from laying on that couch. Okay. Place Sharon on the couch, but Sharon still did the whole cover up and not just a cover up of the crime. Sharon still mastermind a frame up of Daniel. See, she may get off with the murder of Heather. I still think Lucy might be involved, but we'll see. But the cover up, oh, that's all Sharon. And then the framing, the sneaking back into the apartment and hiding and, and planting to and giving false statement to the cops. How's she going to get out of that? Mm -mm. I don't care about mental. Well, I do care about mental instability. That's going to be the defense. Sharon's going to have to go to Pine Ridge or whatever theirs is, you know, 
I don't know what the name of their mental facility is, but she's gonna have to go there. Right? And then what she gonna get out and be a hundred percent cured and everybody's gonna forget what she didn't know. No. That chick's a danger to society and herself. She really is. But anyway, we got chance. He's searching the apartment. Daniel called him and said, okay, because Phyllis convinced him to let a uh, chance search the apartment so that, look, they could just move forward with the investigation. So Chance is searching the apartment. That's why Lucy, Daniel had Lucy get out of the house. And well, actually, no, Lucy was out of the house and she called Daniel and said she was going to be out for a while because, you know, she was at the coffee house, which was a, the perfect opportunity for Chance to come over. So Chance really didn't find anything. And all of a sudden, they heard a chime from a phone. First time they heard it, Chance is like, mm -hmm. then the phone chimes again a little bit later. And Chance is like, is that your phone? And Daniel's like, no, that's not my phone. He said, because it's not my phone. So where's that noise coming from? So they hear it again. And Chance goes to the credenza, the Alp liquor cabinet, and he opens and he sees the phone and he picks it up. And Daniel looks at that. He goes, Daniel, whose phone is this? And he goes, it looks like Heather's phone. But why would Heather's phone be here? And so Daniel's coming to reach for the phone and Chance is like, no, 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 this is evidence. No, you can't touch it. So he says, do you know Heather's password? He goes, yes, I know Heather's password. We both know each other's password. Okay. So he tells the password to Chance. It doesn't work because remember, Sharon changed it. So Daniel says, wait, wait, we're on the same account. I can go in and I can unlock the phone from our master account, which he did and Chance was able to get into the phone. And so he's searching and he's searching the text history and he looks at this, he goes, what's this? And Daniel says, what's what? You find any, any information on what could have happened to Heather? And Chance says, look, I need to, you know, I, I really shouldn't discuss anything. This is evidence. When he goes, no, 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 Chance. I let you come in here. This could be something that I can help with. What did you find? Oh, there's a, a unsent text message to Paul about how Heather was afraid of Daniel now. And she was going to be taking Lucy to Lisbon because, you know, things had gotten bad between them and she's afraid. And Daniel, as Chance read it, Daniel said, Heather would never write that. That's not how she writes. And he goes, and Heather would never text that to Paul. You know, like she would call her father. She wouldn't send that to a text in him. I mean, to him, he says, I don't know what's happening here, Chance, but something's not right. And so now Chance opens the credenza and he pulls out the bloody towels and Daniel's looking at them kind of freaking out. He goes, wait, wait, what, what, what is that? What are those? And Ch Chance says, do you recognize these? He goes, they look like our towels from the bathroom, but what's that on those towels? Is that blood? And Chance says, it could be. Daniel, what are these towels doing in here with this phone? Daniel says, I don't know. I'm as surprised as you are that they're there. Wait a minute. Why are you asking me that like that? Are you thinking I did something to Heather? And Chance just looks at her, he at him, and he goes, "I'm just asking these questions." And Daniel says, "Oh no, oh no, you know what? Mm -mm. I don't know how those things got there, but it's obviously somebody's trying to frame me." 
And Chan says, well, nothing's obvious. And he goes, and, you, and he says, so you and Lucy, he goes, you need to now leave. This is now a crime scene. And you need to you uh, get a place for you and Lucy to stay. And Daniel said, what? Yeah, no, you can't stay here anymore. And so Daniel does that. He calls Phyllis and Summer and he tells them, and then they kind of send Summer back to Chance. And, or Summer tells Chance that, oh, Summer, I, I want to be the one to tell you. It's not looking good for your brother. But he doesn't tell Summer what he found. He says, oh, you may want to tell your brother to get a lawyer. Right? And so she ends up going back to the park because they're, they're meeting at the park. And Lucy was going to meet there, meet them there. Uh, and so she comes back and she tells him, Chance says you need to get a lawyer. Um, but they had told Summer the first time she was there what they found. So she went back to Chance a second time and said, you found a towel. You found Heather's phone. And so she goes, Chance, my brother would not do this. He loved Heather. And who would leave that there? I mean, if he did, why would he leave it there? Chance says, look, I cannot go into detail in the case. I can't, Summer. I'm just following the evidence. She goes, well, this evidence is leading wrong. So anyway, they have to, you know, they, you know, Chance couldn't say anymore. So she comes, that's when Summer goes back to the park and says that, you know, Chance said to get a lawyer. So they're thinking about it. And Phyllis says, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense at all. Who for one? And Lucy's teary eyed. But Lucy, the funny thing is throughout the whole scene, even uh, Thursday and Friday, the way Lucy's looking is like, she doesn't want her dad to go to jail. But I don't know, to me, I'm seeing some guilt there. And now she doesn't like the fact that her dad is being framed because I think Lucy may have actually killed Heather, but remember Lucy left because she and Daniel went to the movies. She doesn't, and she knows Sharon was there, but she doesn't know everything. Yeah, she knows Sharon cleaned up the mess because when they got home, wasn't nobody. But now the framing of her father is a different story. That's a different story. So Phyllis says, no, 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 nope. I'm thinking of Sharon. And they're like, Sharon? And Lucy's just looking like, mm -hmm. she was there, right? Sharon has admitted she was there that night. See, this is what gets Sharon. This is what got her. I think her little smugness, her little plan, this is what screwed her little plan up. Except if they find DNA, because look, her strands of hair are going to be there. They're either going to be on that couch where she was laid on, laid down on, or with the little struggle she and, 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 and Heather had that night. Sharon's hair is going to be there. So by her admitting she was there, that would stand to reason her DNA would be there too. So that may not be too bad of a stretch. It's just the stretch is Heather would never confide in her. See, as far as the surface goes, it's explainable. But to the people that know Heather and the people that know how Sharon has been reacting to the family makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. And so Phyllis says, no, something's up with Sharon. And they're like, why would you think Sharon? That's a lot. That's a stretch, mom. She said, because I remember the last confrontation Sharon had with Heather. I was there. Oh, no. There's a lot to Sharon Newman. And she's been unhinged for months. Yes, Sharon should not be overlooked. And Sharon is the one that now we're finding out was there. We all know Heather would never confide in her. But Sharon was there. 
She didn't tell you she was, she didn't tell anybody she was there. And then she tells who, when she finally does tell somebody, she tells the police. And then she gives them a version of you and Heather's relationship. She goes, nope, mm -mm, I'm stuck. She goes, if it's one thing, my senses, she almost said her spidey senses, right? My intuition has never been wrong. Her gut instincts have never been wrong. She says, Sharon is involved with this. And it goes, clearly, no, she can't, she wouldn't want to, I mean, she didn't hate me enough to do this because of Cassie. Phyllis says, I don't know exactly what's happening, but I'm going to find out. And they're like, don't interfere with the police. Don't she go, no, I'm not going to interfere. But you did not do this, Daniel. I know you did not do this. And Summer's like, and I know it too. She says, so absolutely, I am going to be investigating this. Because see, Chance is looking at it, and he's a good cop. She's probably like, the only reason you're not in jail probably right now is Chance. But look, next week they're probably going to arrest him. It's Chance. He's only following what he's seeing. She's just, but no, this is not adding up. So she goes, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Now, Friday was all about reminiscing, reminiscing Phyllis's past, which was a wasted episode. They could have kept Friday in the can. We didn't need it at all. Um, but I want to talk about the, the evidence and how that phone was chiming. Now, Sharon placed the, that plant there the night before. I don't know how full the charge was in Heather's phone when she planted the evidence there, but how could that phone stay charged the entire time? And what made the chiming go off? Um, it couldn't be Sharon texting her phone to make it go off because Daniel said, look, I have been texting and calling Heather ever since she left. I would have heard that phone. But look, he hadn't been calling her since he ID'd her body, right? But what I want to know is what chime, what made the phone chime? When Chance got in the phone, because Daniel unlocked the account, Chance never said, oh, this was an alarm, pick up laundry, right? Chance said she had a grocery list in there for Thanksgiving. Yes, she did. But this ain't Thanksgiving, so the grocery list wasn't chimey. But that's just convenient that after all that time, the phone starts going off when Chance was there and never before. Mind you, Lucy had already said the police were searching the apartment. And she, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Sharon, she, but she would have to have a burner phone because if it would come from her phone to send a text message or anything else, her phone number would show up. So we'll see. I don't, see these are little things that when you're talking about who done it and tying up loose ends, the writers don't do a very good job of it. Because why did the phone go off and keep doing this little chime like somebody was sending text messages to it? So anyway, everybody, I, I oh, goodness gracious, this storyline is getting bizarre. And my whole thing with it is Sharon better pay. She better pay. I'm, I'm not going to like the typical, the bad guy always gets off and away with stuff. So let's go to Comic Corner, Comic Corner. Denzel. Denzel says that I didn't read Denzel, I didn't read your comment on October 17th. You and this is obviously a GH one, right? Because you're talking about Sasha and her deadbeat mother. And you're saying your comment was first. Um, remember, I don't always go from the top to the bottom. 
Sometimes I start from the bottom. I, I go top to bottom one day, next day, bottom to top. And then last week, I think I forgot Common Corner two days. <laughs> I wasn't feeling too well last week. Um, and then I for sure on Friday, Friday, I started from the middle because we had a hundred and no, no. Friday, we had Thursday. I didn't read Common Corner at all, which was the 17th. Friday. I started from the middle and read to the end to kind of mix it up because we had something like 69 comments. So I start and because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get to them all. But anyway, Denzel, you know, I love your comments. Um, I do tell everybody to read Denzel's great recap and in, in whatever you're recapping. Uh, I'm just surprised you like uh, Young and the Restless too. So I get your recaps here as well. Um, but anyway, that's probably what happened when I did not read your comment. I think one day for sure, yeah, you're right. Your comment was first, but I, I was start, starting from the bottom up and I never make it all the way up. I, I never make it from the top all the way to the bottom. There's so many comments. Um, Lisa says, we, the audience, know it doesn't make sense, but chance is following the evidence right now. In the end, uh, he'll find out the truth about Sharon committing the crime. Yeah, possibly. But the thing is, Chance is following the evidence. But remember when Phyllis did the whole fake dead thing? Uh, there was evidence there, but Chance always was following another angle because he felt Summer was involved somehow. Chance is not stupid. He's not. But Chance doesn't solve cases either. I have, what case did Chance ever solve? I am says, uh, Lily never listened to Devon nor reads the writing on the wall. Glad she heard him. Victoria says, bad writing, fragmented plots. Victor anticipates every new move. He knew Nikki would come clean to Lily, which takes him off the hook of letting uh, him out of the deal. Yep. Claire will be her replacement. He knows Jack is going to get Kyle for corporate espionage. Thus, uh, getting Michael Baldwin as his lawyer to get him out of the mess. Uh, meaning getting Victor out of the mess, not Kyle. Victor knows uh, that he doesn't have Jill's signature on the deal to sell the company. But she will because she's never been able to beat Victor. Jack will hire Audra, which will make Diane and Kyle's heads explode. I wonder why they put Sharon in Martin's orbit. I know. Me too. I think he's going to either end up being her psychiatrist or find out that she's mental. She may find out that he's as mental as she is. Uh, either Sharon or Ashley is going to find out Martin is the evil twin. If Jack put Audra in, uh, he may have a hard time getting her out. She has worked for every company in Genoa City. You know the writers don't explain how Heather's body, or didn't explain how Heather's body uh, got out of the blankets and ropes in the water. I know they sure didn't. Um, maybe the whole season was Sharon's dream. Nah, too many different lives have been, are moving along for this to just be a dream segment now. And now, Denzel, here's your comment on Young and the Restless today. Denzel, at this point, I'm so done with the storyline and shocked. Um, it shocked me about Chance when he asked Daniel to search for Heather's stuff um, like, bruh, just put two and two together. That Sharon was the one out, the one that killed Heather shaking my head. I'm so over the storyline, including how they're writing Kyle and his parents' storyline with Victor. Great review, Daily Recap as always. And then Anita says, Daily Recap, lady, this story is getting more and more bizarre. Yes, it is. Um, I'm just shaking my head and dismay at what they're doing with this whole storyline. Goodness gracious. All right, everybody, I will be back uh, next week. We'll see. Will I do one or two? We'll find out. So you all have a phenomenal rest of your day.